Greetings. Akesh? Yes. Hello, old friend. Hey, hey, hey Max. How okay. are you? Good. How are you? Very nice. That is a nice crowd today. Yes. Very nice energy. Yes. I heard Gahil was here. Yes. Yes. Very briefly. And he gave us blessings and a teaching on. You are blessed with him. He is. Yes. He is rare. What would you like to know today? You want to start with questions or have any message first? I have no messages today. I am open. Please ask the questions if you like. I would like to enlighten you in any way that you would like to know. Are you part of a council, like a, the Galactic Council, or do you come here on your own? My people are not part of the Galactic Council. We are neutral. We do give advice to Galactic Councils if they wish it. But we are neutral. We do not become part of any war, defenses, or any part of any political societies. We have our own beliefs our own culture, and we must be respected. We have our own way of life, and it cannot be interfered with by alliances that teach different ideas. Our people have survived many, many hundreds of years with this same philosophy, and it has done us well. We have very little crime, much love, and much creativity. But no, we do not involve ourselves with others other than to speak and talk and interact. But we do not become alliance partners. No question. What is the name of the planet you're from? We do not give that out. How many planets do you occupy? We are occupy four planets at this time. Trillions of blues and four planets. Yes. Three minutes. Yes. How was it possible? There's much room on these planets. Are these big or just multi-level? They're both. They're big and they are multi-level. Or they go through each other. You are kind of transparent. Fourth dimensional, or? yes. Oh wow. And you you glide, right? You glide in the in the planets. I the part of society I belong to, yes, we do glide. Oh, I see. There are different parts of our society as there are different parts to all societies. Some choose not to glide, others choose to glide, some want walking, some want running, some choose to not be moving at all. <laughs> Their mind moves, though. Do you understand? Yes. Please, go, go ahead. Are the, are the angels aliens? No, the angels are part of a spiritual culture. They are part of God culture. We are of the universe, the galaxy. We are just part of the world with you. But angels, no, they have a higher creation They are of a higher creation, I should say. And they're, they're not multiplying and proliferating, right? Do, does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Okay. Mm -hmm. So are you currently living on a spaceship near Earth? No, I do not do space travel. <laughs> <laughs> Why? I'm comfortable where I am, and I have means to get here without space travel. I guess it's a form of space travel, but it's not like a, a little ship like they do with... I come here in spirit only, but you can see that it's a little more than spirit. It's almost like holographs, but yet 
I can see you, you can see me, you see Jim, that's all you see. It's... It's silly, isn't it? But it's quite effective for me. <laughs> How many people do you go to? I have three people. Three on there? Only three, yes. Only three will accept me. All, all males? No, there is one female. Do you go to other planets and other... I'm not interested in other planets. I know all about them. Your planet is extraordinary right now. That's why I come here. I want to learn. And I want to teach. Because other places you go, they have their own ways. and You are more open. You have more ways of reaching out. You have no telepathy. You have deeper emotion. We tend to internalize our emotions and leave them go because they're just not necessary at times. But here, your emotions are necessary at all times because that's how you communicate. We, as telepaths, can face each other and know many things. Of course, there's a part of us that we keep hidden for our partners, our mates, which we do have. But when we are socializing, we can speak directly to you, and you will know our intention, our thoughts about that subject, and we can enjoy each other that way. Whereas your enjoyment pattern is so much more in-depth. You have so many more, what's the word, idiosyncrasies. <laughs> yeah, we do. <laughs> and you are also much more individual. And we tend to be a little more alike. But that's not bad for us. But it's fascinating to me that you are so different. Our society is quite happy the way it is, but I think your society groans for growth. You reach out for it. You grab onto things that are unknown to you, and that's so refreshing for me. Do so you understand? We reach out into the universe, and we see things, and we go, oh yes, we'll study that for a while. But you are learning so much right now. Your lights are so much changing within. We are in awe of you in many ways. Does that answer your question? I, I babble. Do you have a three-dimensional body similar to ours, or are you just in four, fourth and fifth dimension? I do have a body that would be considered corporeal in my society, but it can go through a door or a wall, or we don't have doors. You have doors. We don't have doors, but we do have portholes, places that it's easier to go through than others, if that makes sense to you. I mean, it's less dense, so we, we can go through that less density, but it's... Um, we find it uh, that uh, the fourth dimension, that is the added dimension, is that we can be solid or we can be light. We is call that it light. What astral projection feels like? Yes, that would be a very good association word, yes. Yes. So you're three dimensional, but you kind of add a four dimension once in a while? Yes. There's more movement to be had in the mind than there is in the physical. Oh, yes. We've, we have long been mentally move, movable, motionful, whatever the word is. Motionful, motion accelerated. Okay. Yeah. How, is, how is your society based? Like, for us, you know, there's oh, men, women, we get up, go to work. Yes, oh, that is a really good question. I like to talk about my society that way. Because we are an intention society that moves forward, and someday you'll be like this, I'm sure. You'll be 
similar to this. We have degrees of accomplishment. Everyone is given an idea that they would like to, to move forward with. You know, your favorite thing. As a child, your favorite thing, what that was. And as you grow, you get other ideas of what you want to be. But as you accomplish what you want to be, in one thing, you get promoted in society. Do you understand? And then, as you get to that level, then you can move to another level, because then you will have some other thing to learn, so that you will be promoted to another part of society. And this way, we get to know a lot of parts of the society, because we get to learn it, and each other. And there are some contexts that are, yes, stronger than others. Yes, yes. We have friends. And we have entertainment. And some of those things that people like to do are entertainment. And as they become accomplished at that, they move to another level. Do you understand? And then there's the lower levels, the, the, the lower vibrations, if you will. The lower vibrations we help. As we become accomplished, we get to work with the lower vibrations to help them come up. Just like we're training you to be one with each other, to bring each other up, we do the same thing. We become trainers and tutors and whatever you want to call them to bring up those that are young and those that are, have the, the need to have counseling more. Because we had our counselors, they, and then we become the counselors. And then that becomes a multifaceted part of our society because not only are we connected to moving up, but we're connected to bringing up the lower. It's a beautiful thing. So, where do you basically live other than coming into telepathically someone's body? Where oh, where I, we live? live on our planets. Uh, we have housing, just like you do. We have our own, um, what you might call establishments. We move, I float from one place to another, and I can stay stationary, and I can communicate with other worlds. Believe it or not, the galaxy is a really small place in some kinds, because we are permitted to send out communications to anybody that we want to. And they are permitted to come back, even though we're not in alliance. We get like a newsletter, like you would get it on the internet. You would get your news from the internet. We get news from the galaxy very similarly. We get from that. So, what was the question? So you, so you basically live on a planet? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, you live on a, a different planet. Yes. On a planet. Yes. It's in the galaxy. Yes. Somewhere. Yes. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. They were all yes. And it's just one dimension up. Yes. One dimension up. Just like the, the spaceships that are in your atmosphere, you cannot see them. Why? They go to a different dimension. To They go to the fourth dimension and become undetectable to you. Is that where you are? Fourth? I'm Basically? Well, is that where you live, where your planet is? Yes, yeah, so I'm in the fourth dimension, but right now, yeah, you're right. I'm in the third. Right. And you know what? I find it refreshing. You know why? Because I can't walk through anything. <laughs> it's like I have to use the doors. I have to use... It, it, it's a whole new set of rules. It's sort of exciting. But, but the other thing is, is I get to feel what people feel inside their bodies when I go inside them. And... That's a whole new thing for me, and it makes me very excited to feel what they feel and know what they know and, well, don't always know what they know. I have to ask them first, but I'm not allowed to go into the brain. That's sort of a no-no unless you ask, so, um, but I go in and there sometimes, but. Uh, so Jim has given you permission? He's giving you permission to be in... Well, he gives me permission for a lot of stuff, but not everything. But we'll have to talk about that some other time. But... 
All right, all right. Let's keep it clean. Keep it clean. <laughs> I have a question. When, yes. When we are on dimension, dimensions, so these human colonies, uh, are they in third or fourth dimension? I just realized I don't know. The dimensions that you speak of are in the third dimension. The yes. colonies? Yes. They are all in the third dimension. All yes. in the third. So humans all don't travel to the fourth yet? No, they do not. Can, can we travel to the fourth? You cannot at this time. Can then some of the humans travel to the fourth? There are some humans that can, but not all humans can travel to the fourth dimension. They are not equipped for it. What percentage of humans can travel to the fourth? Hmm, I never asked that question. Just a moment. Probably two percent. Thank you. You you invite your questions yourself. Guide guide the conversation. Ask for more questions. Um, do you have a monetary? Do you have any monetary value? No, and they're working on having you not have a monetary unit. Of, well, not me personally. Mm -hmm. But well, oh, that's a long story. Should I tell it? Sure. Um, we do not have a monetary unit. Our our. Uh, monetary unit is privilege and as we work up through the the units of knowledge and growing we are given privilege and it costs no money to do anything we've learned that money becomes more of a negative thing than it does a positive thing in every society every single society that we know of Money is negative. It becomes a source of power. It becomes a source of greed. You, 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 uh, you believe that monetary, is this a reward? Are you allowed to come here because you're being rewarded for something that you did? Actually, that is a very good question, and the answer is yes. Thank you. I am a privileged person on my planet. And being a privileged person on my planet... I can come to you. I do have many coaches at times. Sometimes they're not very good. <laughs> but sometimes they are. They need mentoring then. Well, they don't know mankind. They don't know the human condition. They think they do. I know it better being here. But they go by their own condition, which is very logical since they are in their condition. So, it makes it harder for them to understand your condition, but I am starting to learn. I'm starting to learn. I'm just beginning to learn. You were on the question of money. Ah, yes. Money. Bad thing. For We do not need it and we can run our society without it. Now, what I have to tell you is about El. El is a spiritual community. You've heard of Elohim, probably, or El Shaddai. No. El, these are religious terms from your ancient past. El, it's just El, E-L, on your planet. They are the community of finance, okay? Or what, what, I wouldn't call them finance. What would you call them? Commercialism? I don't know. Capitalism? Something. Huh? Capitalism? Well, they did See, they're trying to get rid of capitalism. So uh, this is what they're going to do. They're going to eventually crash the, the markets of the world so that they can bring about a change in your, the way you do monetary business okay. and this has been in the process for many years and you've seen many hints of it government shutdown um, that that really isn't a big part of it though really but there are other things you'll see in the Middle East for example there are many indicators over there that will tell you that the the that eventually the governments will crash and monetary will be raised as something else. It will be a different society when that happens. However, unfortunately, the United States will be hard, one of the harder ones hit because they're greater. The greater they are, the harder they fall. If you 
can remember that expression. I've heard that a couple times from your people. So, But that is their plan. They have a time period for it, but I won't mention that. So, You should. Really? Yeah. About 2027. So, a lot of people would say, oh, they can possibly do it in that amount of time. Oh, yes, they can. <laughs> so, they can do it. Give us something positive. I mean, it's scary. Give, yeah, it is. Give us a way out. Um, you will have to talk to Elle about that because they're in charge of that project. That's not anything that I deal with. I just know about it because of what they tell me and others on their community. How did other civilization get through that? They will. How did other civilizations in the okay. universe get, How did they through, get the, through it? Through the crash. Um, How did yours do? We got through it by, by understanding who we are as individuals. We, you see, we have telepathy. And that helped us get through it very much. Because we could see the positive side of it all at once, in a way, um, because as soon as the positivity became the base, we moved through it. But like this, we all had to thread ourselves together like a big mesh, because the positivity is what kept us alive. And we're very positive people. Of course, we weren't always great positive people like we are now. We, we had our times when we were young, primitive beings. We weren't like you. Um, we don't have as many toes. <laughs> we don't have as many fingers. We don't have as much... Well, our atmosphere is very different. I couldn't breathe here other than being in this body. This body breathes, and I understand that it needs what it needs, but I could never survive here. I'd need a space suit, and even then... How, how long ago was the crash? Economy crash on your... Our crash? Oh, probably... Well, actually, it was... 487 years ago. How many blues survived? Our percentage was? 80%. In regards to Revelations, it's a book in the Bible. Yes. It's very spiritual. Yes. It, it, uh, there's a quote. It says, um, he'll come like a thief in the night. Correct. And there's so many discussions among scholars here on earth. Um, is at, at that point, will that be where the mass ascension physically it occurs? That would, That is a very good question. And the answer is... Yes, you call it a rapture, but it really is more of an ascension. However, not everybody will leave the earth at that time. There will be ascended beings that have to stay. And you probably know why. It says that in the Revelations as well. So, um, to get the stragglers, to bring the rest of you, not the rest of you, but the rest of your planet into the light. So we Everyone. need light workers even after the ascension because not all will ascend at once. Okay? And that is a very good point. Very well, very lovely. There's, there's talk that uh, some of us are able to enter at will other dimensions. Now, you know, I personally spend a great deal of time meditating and I've studied many different techniques to, to do that. And it sort of feels, I imagine, like what you're feeling in here. Yes, in there. That I just never thought of it that way. Yes. Oh, my you're, goodness. Yes. That's, yeah. So I really am doing that. It's not yes. just in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes we have to wonder. Well, well you know, you know when, you know, during when, meditations, they become super realistic. Well, you know, when Jim first started channeling, he thought I was his imagination and he was going crazy. So, um... I had to convince him that I was actually real. I wiggled his toes. I, um, 
I made some physiology things happen. I talked to Max about things that Jim could never understand. And so did these do. And to several to pair. And they talked to through him about things he did not know. And that convinced him that, okay, there must be something to this. And now we are good friends. In a way. <laughs> Ask more questions. Invite more questions. Yes. Invite I'm ready questions. for questions. Invite. Um, we are still a warring world. Yes. How, how do you view that? as we are still a, a warring world. I see it as inevitable in your con present condition, as inevitable because you are human. You, this is how I see it. You are a cylinder, whereas we are a community. Um, you have to communicate with words and gestures and touches and things of that nature. We can communicate like this. Do you understand? Yes. So, there is so much misunderstanding in your culture because you get not to have this. Yes. You hear and the brain decides what that meant. Much of the time, it's wrong. Much of the time, it's wrong. When a word, okay, oh, you have these, do any of you use text messages? <laughs> How often are you misunderstood on your text messages? Mm -hmm. Indeed, mm -hmm. indeed. This makes you a cylinder, not, not communicating like this, one in one. You are communicating from outside, and you cannot possibly be at peace while you're communicating from outside. So I see that as the human condition, as you are. When you learn to communicate, which some of you are learning to communicate telepathically, we are training some of you that are of higher vibrations, not I, I'm not training, but there are people, there are uh, species that are training, Yi Yi is training. Uh, I have to be correct because Max will correct me. Um, the Yil will um, be training people with telepathy as time goes on so that we can interface. And that is the only way that you can become part of the galaxy is if we can interface with you. And that is happening. And we see that as part of your evolution right now. That is one of the next steps in your, in your world, is slight glimpses of telepathic knowledge from each other. And as that becomes more evident and more prevalent, the hatred and the, the distrust and the misunderstanding will start to diminish. Not with everyone. There are those that mean harm in the universe, in your world. But when you know someone's intention, when they speak, if you can just tell what their intention is, that's all you need to know. That will be your first step. Knowing intention of someone else. And then you will know if they are good or bad and if you should associate, if you should communicate. You will start becoming telepaths in the very early stages. Does that make sense? Yes. Sensing good and evil in others is the first step of telepathy. Do you see um, us becoming telepathic? Yes. It will take time, but there are people on your planet that are already telepathic. Those people have been chosen to communicate with aliens, and why not? They, they transfer their human condition to the aliens so that the alien can understand us, you, us, everybody. So, I don't know how to say it. Yes? Can I ask a strange question? Certainly. Maybe you've experienced this. I 
<clears throat> I, I very recently, even this year, had people telling me things that would make me but, um, have to go, okay, this is not a good situation, and let them go. I mean, people are literally telling me, telling, and it's not that I judge them, but I think that it's something, or God or something, having them say, I'm such and such, so I can go, okay, that's not good for me. Mm -hmm. I mean, pe people that it would, I wouldn't have asked them, I would automatically accept them, and it's all different, can you work, neighbors, whatever, and it, I think it's so that I can kind of um, withdraw, not withdraw from the world, but withdraw and like walk in a sweeter path. Yes, you are staying within the light that you see. You are staying within the intentions of your good nature. Yes. And it's okay because they're they're the ones telling me. I'm not judging them, but they, rather than knock on their door, I'll go. They already told me they're not right. appropriate. For as me. long as you are not discouraging them away from the light, right. you can maintain a distance and still send them the light. Do you understand? Well, I haven't quite got to there. I'm working on that today. You will know. <laughs> you will know. I don't know what to do about that. Part. Because there are some that when they walk into your presence, they bring their energy with them. And some of it is not good energy. No, well, I've always loved my neighbor. But, but, now love not, but now is not like a time for that. But your energy will conquer their energy, mm -hmm. you see. You buy so well, they'll come and say we're hungry or we want to sit. If they're coming and saying things that are not okay, right, just then allow you must, them to... Yes, you move away, but you leave your light. Oh, okay. Yeah, how do I do that? <clears throat> by saying, excuse me, and being very gracious, and leaving love instead of saying, oh, oh I, I can't say, stand oh, this anymore. Yeah, okay. You leave your... Well, today when I drove out to here, I sense blessing to my neighbors in my yes. street. That exactly, right? that's the kind of thing. When that you leave a thing. situation that is harmful to you, you must say, I must go, but blessings or love or whatever to you. Mm -hmm. And leave it with them, knowing that you are in a good place, but they are not. That way they will want to be more in a good place, at least logically that's what I would think but not all people are logical so we buy that there's only one logical person in this room yes <laughs> do you understand that though yes. mm -hmm. leave them with a good a smile if nothing else huh. <laughs> that is a challenge yeah. but you know it's hard to love someone who's hurting you all the time it is very hard to love, and you know it's almost impossible. No, I've, I, no, no, I, I've loved people who should have been shot dead. Yeah. My, it's a new thing for me to walk away from them. Shot dead? I do. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> I mean, we, the, that happens once every uh, 400 years in our culture. <laughs> I mean, nobody kills anyone, even if they want to. They their intention is found out and it's stopped. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. It's impossible for anyone to be murdered on our planet because the intention is already, if there's an intention, it's, it's out there. We know it and we can stop it immediately. And that is part of what our culture does to help each other, so. How do you help the sick? There is very little sickness, but we do have, do have illness. Um, they bring them to a, a specific place, like you would call a hospital, but it, we have a cure for most everything, so it doesn't take long for them to be back on, in circulation. Is there a transition where you are? Transition in what sense? And when, like we, we, when we physically die, we, we, we transfer. Oh, your soul. We have souls. <laughs> we have souls. I'm not laughing at you. I know. You are. <laughs> we have souls, yes. Um, we, and we go to a higher place as well. 
We have spirit guides as well as you have spirit guides. We have higher selves as well as you have higher selves. We have past lives like you have past lives. I, when you yes. when you look out at our group, we, we're known as the emissaries of light. Oh, very good. And when we have been together like fifteen or sixteen years. Yes. All of us. When you look out at us around the room, what do you see? I see a higher vibration than I saw last time. But I I see a lot of love between you. I see a lot of sharing and giving. I see a lot of talent. Am I right? Yes. yes. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you are good souls. And that's why I'm so free tonight. Yes. I feel very free tonight because I feel very high energy here. I feel very high vibration here. And you must understand, I deal well, very well in high vibration. And I do not deal very well with low vibration. I have to confess. In low vibration, I get out of sorts, as you would say. Can you tell us more about your bodies in the sense that ours are very fragile? Which kind of leads into the money thing in a way. We have to keep eating and drinking and oh, yes. keep washing. And <laughs> you will have all of that. You will have all that. Um, our bodies, we have similar organs. They do similar things. They're not exactly the same. They're smaller. I'm smaller. I'm only like five foot one or two by your standards. I'm not even sure. Very short. Um, huh? <laughs> oh, good. I have someone that I could be taller than. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I feel manly now. <laughs> you have two genders like we do? Yes, we Male do. Female? Yes. I need to drink in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> All right, is she drinking water? <laughs> <laughs> yes, water. <laughs> so... What was I saying? Oh, our bodies. Yeah. We're smaller. We have little blue bodies. We look like, as I said last time, we look like little gingerbread boys or, and girls because we're sort of bulbous in, in, in our appearance. But I find that quite attractive. But, um, of course I would. <laughs> but... Does the whole planet look like that, or do you have oh, different we have colors? Some, yeah, we have a couple shades of blue, yes, and a, a silvery blue, and um, we have different races, okay. like you do, but we all get along very well, and some of the races are rare, I mean, like, a child is born that's maybe silvery blue, and that's not quite normal, but it's accepted as a special child. So, we, it's always positive. It's always positive. So, and we let them know that. You mentioned that uh, we will be like, like you in a way. Have you seen Not what you. happens to humans when they get to the fourth dimension? What is the change? What is the physiology of the fourth dimensional? I've only sapiens? ever seen one go to the fourth dimension. And he had been prepared for several years to go to the fourth dimension and he still couldn't walk through walls but he could exist there but mm -hmm. he couldn't become completely fourth dimensional he um but he was it was very enlightening for him and it was a very a very cool thing so so the closest to the four dimensional homo sapiens will be pleiadians yes and, and they go thought... through walls only if we let them no, I'm just teasing <laughs> on. <laughs> Actually, they have dimensional travel, which is like walking through a wall. But in the, on their planet, they do not. Their society prefers not to walk through walls. And they find it a privacy issue. Uh -huh. So they do not walk through walls. 
They can if they want, but they have rules and regulations that say we don't think that that's a good idea. And what happens to people who violate those rules? They're, I can't really say they're punished because they really aren't punished. They're like given a time out. But um, they are, I, I don't know what the word is. What would the word be? Reprimanded. Hmm? They're Reprimanded. Per, perhaps reprimanded. It's, uh, but uh, th it doesn't happen often. They, we guard our rules, they guard their rules, you know. And people are happy with the rules because they wouldn't want people to walk in on them, so. Because the Pleiadians are private people. The Blues are a little less private. We, 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 we don't quite understand the privacy issue, but, you know. <laughs> but we do respect it. So You have privacy issues down here, oh, big time. So, big time, right. yeah, big time privacy issues down here for, for sure. So, yeah, because I tried that. Yeah, well, it, it didn't work then. So, is your climate constant enough that you need to wear clothes? Um, some of us wear clothes. It's, it's mostly clothes are for ceremonies. Mm -hmm. We have lots of different ceremonies that we like to do. And um, whenever someone reaches a higher level of, of, uh, of, uh, in society, there's a ceremony when you know in their particular groups, and and so there's always ceremonies and celebrations going on on our planet. So it's a very happy place. So, <laughs> we in fact, the, I couldn't come talk to Max one day because we were having a ceremony. So, <laughs> oh, somebody was promoted, and we just I couldn't go. I said, Sorry, Max, can't come. <laughs> But we do wear clothes uh, sometimes, um, mostly just the bottom parts of clothes, like you have bottom parts of your clothing. Um, ceremonial is much, much more dressy, much more colorful. We like color, especially blue. But, uh, <laughs> but seriously, we like other colors too. So. <laughs> What can we do to assist ourselves and the planet to transition for this uh, crash to, so that we can all kind of glide through it easier? Learn about it. Um, there are many places online where you can find things that are coming. yu gi has some things. You'll notice all the sightings and the crop circles. There, some of those crop circles are not real. But others with the radioactive emissions and things of that nature, those are real and they send a message and they send actually vibrations. If you didn't know, if you put some of these crop circle messages together, they spell out almost a song. It's different tones. But it's algorithm tones, which are mathematical, and they come through these crop circles, and they are actually messages in algorithmic tones, okay? And if your planet, which some on your planet have figured out, but are being totally ignored, have figured out what these crop circle tones are saying, they're actually a warning from some species that will not get involved in planetary contact but they will get involved with sending you a message and sending the world a, a warning and telling them who to look out for and what what all's going on so but at this point they're too uh, mysterious for humanity to figure out completely but some people have and those people are enlightened people so they understand they're open to it they're open to the vibration of it it all has to do with vibration and bringing the vibration of the earth up so. is that what the crop circles are for 
to give us a message to bring our vibrations up? What Part of it, it, yes. It's also it's also a warning against what what evils exist that are coming against the vibration, the higher vibrations. But the higher vibrations are within the circles, so it's hard to me to put down in words exactly what I'm trying to say. But I, I didn't even say that right. But um, whatever. The question of the world: Who built the pyramids? Ah uh, ah uh, ah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> That's for me to know and you to find out. <laughs> it's always the answer. It has to be that way. Yes. Yeah. It has to be that way. I'm yes. sorry. I know who did that, but I, I cannot tell you because... I'm sorry. That's, is there something underneath the pyramids? Oh, yes. Deep and darker than anything we know. And will it escape? Um, it's not what, it's not where you're going, no, no, not there. There is something under them, and there is something there, but it's not what you're thinking, no, not that. Can you travel through or manipulate time? Yes. There's three kinds of time. There's linear time, there's chaotic time, and there's circular time. We know of all these times, and there's rules and laws administer to protect us from these kinds of times, but there is no laws for linear time. We are in linear time right now, okay? This yeah. is linear time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, chaotic time and, and uh, circular time are much different, and a circular time is um, a location device, can be used as a location device to move from one place to another, actually. So, um, but You'll know that someday. So. Is it easier to be aware of that? There's a time warp on the yes. land behind There's the house here. Is that a good place to go to experience different times? Yes, if you're the if you have the correct mindset for that. Yes. Uh, there is folded time also. Are there time keepers? Um yes and no. A timekeeper is someone that would make the rules for the time. And timekeepers are on each different level of experience with time. Does that make sense to you? It makes sense to me. I don't know if it makes sense to everybody. But there are timekeepers in each dimension of time understanding. Okay? okay. Time understanding. And... Um, they have very strict rules about these because you can really destroy civilizations time. with time manipulation. And um, they're only permitted to move back in time a very short period and move forward in time a very short period because anything else which has been, anything else would be very destructive. Um, but other people have done it and that's the kind of, but these are malevolent creatures, so, um, and they do attack Earth at, at times in very, very subtle ways so that you don't know that they're even around, but they manipulate productivity. Did you ever have a day when every single person that you met said, oh, I'm so tired today? Did you ever have a day like that where every single person that you met said that? That's, that's an attack by aliens to reduce productivity on Earth. And like you would just think that you're, everybody's tired that day, but it's not. It's, it's actually an attack on society. Everybody's like, draining off our energy. they're draining off your energy. And you know what? No one can stop it but until it starts, and then they can stop it. Because they never know what's going to happen. So they, it's, it's quite interesting. But, all right, I could go on and on about that, but... <laughs> Why do they want our energy? Uh, there are some species that want this planet for its value in minerals and other things. 
frightening things. But we are protecting as much as we can. I would say the Dees, Dues, the Tekers, the Tepes, the, those, and the angels. Angels are around us. Mm -hmm. They are protecting. And um, they can get a shot in now and then, but we're, there's so many species interested in the well-being of this planet that they, the uh, bad, the people that are uh, malevolent are having a hard time getting anything done. Can I ask a personal question? Oh, sure. Don't make me blush green. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing a, a, a Reiki treatment on Max a little while ago, and I ran into what identified itself to me as a guardian. Yes. And it was just simply letting me know that it was none of my business what was there. Mm -hmm. And that that was a life purpose for him. Yes. Is there anything else I can do to help him accelerate the work that he needs to do to get past that? You can um, actually just, when you meditate, do you become one with everything around you? Is that the, how you do it? Mm -hmm. It starts right there, at, right in the physical moment, and I expand to the house and then the neighborhood. And well, you can the, ex and then the country, and then the oceans and the mountains and the whole earth, and yeah, and then it, and then the you know, and then it goes vast. Yeah, uh, you know, I I don't usually have enough time to go too far. <laughs> but but yeah. those kind of meditations help everyone. Mm -hmm. So if you continue to do those kind of meditations, you mm -hmm. help. Not only yourself, but everyone, because it goes out as a connection with those people around you. Even though you may not feel it, but your intention is connected to light workers everywhere. Yeah. And do you know that light workers, the, the positivity that light workers give is cumulative? Two light workers together can be more powerful than. Five bad guys, if you want to say it that way. The light overcomes. Just like the sunlight takes away darkness. The light shines through the darkness. That's right. The darkness, shall never the darkness is destroyed with light. So if you stay in the light, how can you be destroyed? Does that make sense? Yes. Mm -hmm. Because the darkness can't get to you. Not in a way that is viable. You might be able to get to this foot or your left ear. Or, well, that's right, isn't it? But anyway, but he can't control. You see, the, that's a part of the ascension is to take control of negativity. Oh, I cannot stay much longer. It's been a delight talking to you. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. I wish you all blessings. To you also. I wish blessings to you. Please, peace. Hmm. Hello. Hi. <laughs> and how do you feel? Good. Good. <laughs> good. I feel very good. So do we. Good. Call me a finger.
I have five so far. <laughs> <laughs> Where have you been, Jim? In the last few minutes. I don't know where that is. I can hear a little bit, but it's sort of muffled. It's, um, it's like off to the side in a, a room next to a door that I can listen through. Or something like that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. I would say my kid did very good. When he got tired, when you got tired, when you both got tired, I felt that there is some gym coming through like cash. Maybe five percent of gym. Uh. But it wasn't that, it was just, you know, like yeah, she allowed Jim to speak when he like couldn't control the situation. Much. Not much, just you know, just a little bit. Well, yeah, I'm a little tired, <laughs> but I feel good.